Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's Gofa Nilongu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thank you for 21,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. Keep subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing everything that you guys do. Please motivate me by giving me stuff to react to. I'll be more than glad. Just give me the name or the link down below and I'll be sure to check them out. So today I'm going to be reacting to Muslim tribes of the Amazon rainforest secrets of El Dorado. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Alhamdulillah, Nahmadu, wana stainu, wana stakfir, wana udu billahi min shurur and fusil and sayati and malam. In that he la, fala mudilla, woman you lil fala de la sharon la, ila hila la shadu, anna Muhammadan abdu who were a sulu amabat. Salam alaikum rahmatullah, barakatu, and welcome to this exciting journey through Islam in the world. Welcome to the Americas and welcome to the last episode. And we will look deeper into South America. We have spoken about the Caribbean. We have mentioned Brazil as a very important country with regards to the Muslims in South America, the influence of the slave trade, the Muslims, the Muslim slaves in Brazil, the revolt in 1835. And now I would like to look into a region which you probably don't expect. Some of you might not even ever have, have, might not ever have heard of this, this region, the region of the Guyanas. Now, if you live in the English-speaking world, then you might have come across a country called Guyana, which used to be a British Guyana, which was an English, a British colony. But I'm sure that you have never heard of the other two. There is one part of that region which still belongs to Europe. It belongs to France. It is French Guyana. So French Guyana is actually still a colony. SubhanAllah. So French Guyana belongs to France, is a département, it's an overseas department of France. And that's where the French and the Europeans in general have actually their space lab. They're, they they fly rockets to the moon, or whatever else they do there. So they have in Cayenne, in the capital of French Guyana, they have basically established their lab. Not many people live there, not a big population, and not a massive history of French Guyana. The other two are more important in a way of Islam simply because, you will not believe it, Suriname and Guyana, Guyana, former British Guyana, now called Guyana, and Suriname, the former Dutch Guyana. Yes, it was Dutch indeed. The Dutch even went there. The Dutch, you will not believe, such a tiny nation with 16 million people nowadays, very small country, actually had a territory which was 10 times their size abroad. And not only in uh, the Americas, one of them would be Suriname, but also in South Africa, Indonesia, don't forget, the largest Muslim country in the world with regards to population was once a Dutch colony, Indonesia. So Dutch Guyana, Suriname and British Guyana, these two countries are extremely important for us to look into as countries with a very big Muslim population. Suriname has nearly 25% Muslims. That's a quarter of the population of Suriname, of the Dutch Guyana, former Dutch Guyana. Whereas Guyana, so British Guyana, has around 10 to 12%, still a massive amount. Both belong to the Organization of Islamic Countries, the only countries in the Americas that are part of this organization. And both of them play an important role for Islam in that region. The country of Suriname, which again was called Dutch Guyana before, became independent in 1975. Imagine that again, very late to become independent, um, whereas French Guyana has never become independent. I mean, this is uh, very important to mention as well. Christopher Columbus again was the one to spot the coast of the Guyanas in 1498, so six years after he had arrived in the Americas after several journeys. But, a real interest in the exploration and colonization of the Guyanas 
which came to be known as Wild Coast, by the way, later, did not begin until the end of the 16th century. Walter Raleigh began the exploration of the Guyanas in earnest in 1594. He was looking for the golden city of El Dorado. So I'm sure that some of you might have heard of El Dorado. There are even cartoons made about it and documentaries and movies and everything. The city of gold. Now, indeed, they expected the city of gold to be there where the Guyanas are nowadays, especially between Guyana and Suriname, in the jungle of Guyana and Suriname. So they expected that to be there. So the interest, of course, became very big in the 16th, 17th century when the Dutch and the British people actually um, went and colonized that region. One thing that I would like to mention here also they did not only encounter uh, indigenous people who had a problem with Europeans arriving on the territory, but the Dutch and the British and the French had a problem with the Europeans who were there before them, the Spanish and the Portuguese. The Spanish and the Portuguese were the ones who actually had divided the world amongst themselves because they were the first colonial, colonialists in the world. So the Portuguese and the Spanish, they got their part of the cake and they did not expect that the other Europeans would follow, such as the British, the Dutch, and the French. But they did come, and in the end, this region, the Guyanas, has become a very weird region in that part of the world. It's neither Spanish nor Portuguese speaking as a majority or the rest of, the, of South America is. There's just one country in Central America which is called Belize, where they actually speak English, which was an English-British colony, but everything else is Spanish, and Brazil is Portuguese. So with regards to the Muslims there, as I said before, subhanAllah, very interesting case, that if you look at Suriname, the country of Suriname, and we will ignore French Guyana a little bit because there's not a lot to discover. In French Guyana, there's a very tiny percentage of Muslims. Whereas in Suriname and in Guyana, as I said, more than 10%. In Suriname, nearly 25%. Suriname has such a multi-ethnic population, multicultural, multi-religious, that is considered actually by the UN as one of the countries that has to be, that needs to be protected for its diversity that it has. Such a tiny country, the smallest country in, South, in, in the Americas actually, is uh, called Suriname in South America, the tiniest country in South America, with a very small population, not more than half a million, but with 25% Muslims. That is amazing. And amongst them, the 25% Muslims of the population, they're not all the same. They don't come from the same background. They're, most of them have different backgrounds. That means we have another population coming originally from Africa, of course, as we have discovered already that African slaves coming to that part of the world, um, they rediscover their roots. They come back to Islam nowadays. And they have also their own masajid, they have their own mosques in that part of the world. And they rediscover the roots, they go back to Islam and establish a, a new community, a thriving Muslim community, African community in Suriname as well as in, the, in Guyana. That's one part of the Muslim population. Next to this one, there's another massive part of the Muslim population who came later after the slave trade. These were the Indian um, workers who came basically to work on the, uh, after the plantations, after the, the, after the independence of, uh, after the abolishment of slavery. They imported basically Indians uh, simply because we should not forget that Suriname was also once part of the British Empire. The English had also occupied Suriname for a while and they exchanged it with New York, by the way. So the Dutch, the Dutch used to have New York and they called it New Amsterdam. And they exchanged New York, they gave it to the British, and the British gave them Suriname. So Suriname was an English colony before the Dutch exchanged it with the um, English. And this Dutch Guyana, again, they imported, they had imported Indians, right, from India, from the Indian subcontinent, who many of them were Muslims. They had imported them with the Dutch. The next in Dutch colony, as we mentioned before, was Indonesia. So they also imported Indonesians as workers for them, for the Dutch in Suriname. So at this moment, it is one of the only countries, or one of a number of countries in South America, Suriname, which has Indonesian Muslims. 
You will not find Indonesian Muslims in other countries in South America, not as many at least. So with a big population of Indonesian Muslims in Suriname, then we have, so we have Africans, we have Indians, we have Indonesians, and a massive amount nowadays, it has doubled the number, or in the last decades has doubled, of Indian, of Native Americans who live in their Muslim villages in the Amazon. So there are Muslims who live in the deepest jungle, in the deepest, uh, in the Amazon, you know, in Suriname, in the south, where whole Muslim villages had developed. And I had the chance to see when I was in Suriname, actually, it was amazing to go and visit these people. They have basically a small village. In this village, you will find a mosque, which they established, you know, out of wood, as the architecture would be there. It's amazing to see and um, beautiful to go and visit as well. So their number has doubled in the last decade, actually, already. If you look at Guyana, similar things are happening in Guyana, with the difference that Guyana is, um, has a smaller the population of Muslims, but Guyana has had also a Muslim president before. That means a president who had accepted Islam, who had embraced Islam, was a president of Guyana. And there is an influence of Muslims also in politics, especially of Indian background. So you have in Guyana a massive amount of Muslims from the Indian subcontinent, of, Muslim, of Indian origin, and they actually um, are very strong in politics and influence politics in that part of the world. So, of course, again, you will have Africans who are converting and Africans who go back to their roots, who find out that actually they come from and have a Muslim background. And they do establish uh, mosques in that part of the world as well. And again, you will find uh, Muslim villages in the Amazon. You will find Muslim villages in the south of the country. So these countries are normally not spoken about. You know, people don't know a lot about these countries. And it's something that is basically unknown, although French Guyana is part of the EU, by the way. French Guyana is part, as an overseas territory of France, is part of the European Union. So uh, the euro is the currency there. <laughs> so whoever wants to have an adventure from Europe, just go and settle in another part of Europe. Go to South America, go to French Guyana. Um, so uh, in very interesting to see, very exciting to see. And as the only country in South America speaking Dutch, Suriname obviously is another adventure uh, which is exciting again. The school system in Suriname is Dutch-based. They do indeed all speak Dutch and they learn Dutch at school. And uh, the media officially, everything is Dutch. In Guyana, of course, it's English, but it's not the only country there. There is also in Central America, as I mentioned before, Belize, where they also speak English, and the Caribbean countries, where you will have a big English-speaking population as well. Muslims in the whole of this area, from the beginning, from North America, actually from Canada, all the way down to Argentina, to the southern part of Argentina, Patagonia, even islands, you will find Muslims all over. Some are recent immigrants from the 19th century, coming mainly as laborers to work after the abolishment of uh, slavery, coming mainly from Asia. But many African, uh, people of African origin, who had this background of, of coming from, from slave families, they're rediscovering their roots, they're going back to Islam, and they're realizing that that's where they came from originally. They're trying to find the connection with West Africa and are establishing and have been establishing for the last couple of decades actually already new mosques throughout the countries, throughout America, throughout the Americas. And you can say that there's a small revival back to the roots, basically, if you want to call it that way, as well as back to blackness, because that's another thing again. But again, this is worth another episode, maybe, that many people rediscover their black roots. Uh, because there was um, an issue, especially in Brazil, for example, where there is a problem, um, uh, uh, black people wanting to actually look white or behaving as their Portuguese or Spanish or English or, or European uh, masters, basically, before. There is a complex that has been put in these people, and these people have to break out of that. Colonialism is not something that just is in, in, in people in chains, but it also brains and hearts in chains. That's even worse. And this is what we can see in South America. Welcome to StephKeris.com, where you can register for a wide variety of online Islamic history courses and select from a rich collection of publications and certified study programs. 
Why not register online now and begin your journey into Islamic history? Visit us today at www.stephkeris.com. Now, subhanAllah, we've come to an end of not only this episode of the whole series, mashallah, and I really hope that it has given you some ideas, more ideas and better ideas to work with, something to get you out there, get you online, find out more about all these things we discussed. Whoever wants, again, to find out more and more details, take a look at my website, stephkaris.com, take a look at the online courses that we offer, take a look at the books that we have and the documentaries that I also offer on my website. I would like to thank you, Jazakum Lao Khair, and I welcome any question that is still coming. Jazakum Lao Khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sometimes we sit on the internet and learn nothing, but today we'll sit here and learn something, at least. Um, we live in such a big world that sometimes we don't even know some of the information that we come across. Uh, he's speaking about the smallest country in Southern America and how many of us actually knew it existed. How many of us actually talk about it? you know and um i love that his focus was the muslim populations and i feel like he could have given more information on how they live their lifestyle because it's always interesting to find um for example people live in the amazon yes so these muslims live in the amazon there's traditions and then there's religion. So how are they working with the two? How have they incorporated the two so that they don't clash? Because sometimes culture is um, something else. Some people take it too serious is what I'm trying to say here. And um, it's very, very interesting. I hope and wish I come across videos of these Muslims living in the Amazon, for example. I just want to see their lifestyle. It would be something interesting with seeing, reading about, and actually discussing, you know. There's always something to talk about when there's a new topic. And for the black people trying to act like colonizers, like he said, it's all mindset. Your mindset is everything in, in the world. What you tell your mind, you become what you feed your mind will become you so if you want to be cruel you're going to be cruel if you want to be kind you're going to be kind but i only hope there is unity in this country and whether blacks muslims of the amazon dutch people whoever it is you know finds unity but first find peace within yourself so that you can live in peace with those around you and I don't have much to say for this. It was an interesting video. Make sure to the person that suggested this. If there's anything you want us to react to, let us know down below. Just give us or give me the name or the link. And I'll be sure to check it out. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Share it with the friends that of course do not forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in my next reaction video.